Knowing what equilibrium is about equips us with powerful tools to understand the real world around us. One of those is the distribution of effects from trade. So let's start with a simple equilibrium graph. Notice that equilibrium is reached in point A. The corresponding equilibrium price is 2 euro and the quantity is 5,000 loaves of bread. However, also notice that although all units in this market are sold for 2 euro, not all units are equally valuable to the consumers. That is, even the first unit, whose value is about 4.25 euro, is sold for 2, right? But this means what? The consumer's willingness to pay for the goods is higher than they're actually paying for it. We know how much consumers are willing to pay. This is their demand curve. And we know how much they end up paying. This is the market price. So the difference between what they're willing to pay and what they're actually paying is locked in between their demand curve and the market price. We call this the consumer surplus. It is a surplus because consumers value most of the goods more than they end up paying for the goods. And as a result, they pocket the difference. So, for example, imagine you value a house you have viewed at, say, £250,000, but you end up paying just 200000 for it. The difference is your consumer surplus. It is like a profit, a gain, a rent from taking part in the marketplace. We call this rent. The consumer surplus. There is a surplus for the firms too. Remember, remember how we arrived at the optimal supply for each firm. We compared the market price with the marginal costs. But notice that not all units of the good that the firm supplies to the marketplace cost the same amount of money. The marginal costs for smaller quantities are lower and the marginal costs for larger quantities are higher. And even though it costs different amounts of money to the firm to produce the different quantities of the good, the firm sells everything at the going market price. So for each unit it sells, the firm gets a small surplus. We call this the producer surplus, the difference between the market price and what it costs to produce each unit of the good, which is embedded in the supply curve. So, if we sum up the consumer and the producer surpluses, we will end up with the total surplus in the market. Notice that this is the theoretically highest surplus that both consumers and firms can get to. If for any reason, and there are plenty of reasons by the way, the market ends up producing less than the equilibrium quantity, or for any reason the market ends up asking more than the equilibrium price, the market will be experiencing a loss of total surplus, a loss of welfare. We call this loss a deadweight loss. It is a loss because the market could have produced it if it was in equilibrium, the surplus, right? But for various reasons, it's not in equilibrium. The market is not in equilibrium. And as a result, the market cannot produce this extra surplus. It is exactly this extra surplus that the market could have produced, but it did not produce for any reason, that we call the deadweight loss. Notice also that the market equilibrium is Pareto efficient. Point A is Pareto efficient. That is, you can't make the consumers better off without making the firms worse off at point A. So any allocation away from point A creates an opportunity for mutual gains, for lowering the deadweight loss, for moving to an efficient market allocation. So we can all agree that point A is a Pareto efficient allocation, but is it a fair allocation of surpluses? If you imagine an elastic supply, but a very inelastic demand, you will see that reaching equilibrium benefits consumers much more, and they have much more to lose from a deadweight loss in the market. So, firms can argue that creating a deadweight loss in this market is not a big deal because they don't lose much. But as economists, our job is to look at both sides of the marketplace. So, for example, if, if the market is such that consumers are very sensitive to price changes, their demand is very elastic, but the firms are inelastically supplying to the market, 
then the consumer surplus is much smaller than the producer surplus. So in this case, consumers gain very little from trade, whereas firms gain a lot. Expect uh, respectively, firms have a lot more to lose from any distortion to equilibrium. I'll ask you to draw the two versions of equilibrium above um, for homework and perhaps share them during the live classes. So, to summarize, the market creates gains from trade for both sides, the consumers and the firms. Those gains depend on the elasticities of demand and supply, but they depend on how the government intervenes as well. It is the government intervention we're discussing next. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.